Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Uh, today I'm actually in Aurora HDR. I haven't said that in a long time. I was actually going through some old folders, kind of some archives, and I saw some previous HDRs I'd done, and I was like, I haven't really played with Aurora HDR in so long. I thought I'd dive back in. I kind of forgot how much fun this is. I've got so many sets of brackets that I shot. Lots of different cities. I used to travel a whole lot, especially internationally, and I was firing brackets all the time, and it was just... It was a thing. I was so addicted to it. I just kind of forgot how fun it is. So I'm going to jump into Roar HDR and play with an image. Here's a, a bracket set from Dublin. It was a sunrise. I'm going to do auto alignment. I'll do ghosting just in case. Chromatic aberration. Go ahead and hit create HDR. See what kind of fun we can have here. Um, it's a great product. I was playing with it a little bit. I'm like, I'm going to do a video. This is, I don't know. I'm, it's, it's kind of like my first love. This was the first Mac Fun product that I really used. And because I used to do HDR all the time, the first time I opened Aurora HDR, I was kind of like, I'm blown away and I will never use Photomatics again. And I really haven't. I've just kind of used Aurora HDR ever since. Now, having said that, I don't do HDRs like I used to, uh, certainly not nearly as frequently. And I don't find that I necessarily need to, but sometimes some photos, even if you don't need HDR, it's just kind of fun to do it. So Here's my base photo. Um, let's see, I'm gonna go into HDR Basic and maybe give it a little bit of warmth, give it a little bit of tint. I don't really have a plan here. I'm kind of freewheeling it. I'm gonna increase contrast, but I love Smart Tone. I forgot how great that is. You can see what that does. I mean, it just adjusts those tones, but it's intelligent, so it's not gonna, when I'm dragging it to the right to brighten the photo, it's only brightening the stuff that's dark, and it's not brightening the stuff that's already bright. So I love that. Uh, put on the highlights, maybe pull up the shadows a tiny bit. Color, yeah, I love my color. I'm gonna go get some vibrance, put that in the photo. Uh, this is the Happiny Bridge in Dublin over the River Liffey. Um, HDR clarity, yeah, I'm fine with that. Little HDR smart structure, give that a little bit of oomph. I'm fun with that. Ooh, image radiance. This is a fun tool. Yeah, look at that. I love what that does. It does kind of reverse a little bit of what I did in HDR Enhance, which is kind of pop some of that crunch. Um, this kind of smooths it out a little bit, but it also creates some shadowy kind of romantic contrast. I like that quite a bit. Just got to be careful not to go too far. That's kind of far, but the cool thing is you can pull up the shadows. So I'm not completely losing all the brightening I did with the uh, Smart Tone back up here in uh, Basic, right? I love Smart Tone. God, I wish they had Smart Tone still. Um, it's not the same as Accent AI. It's just tone, meaning it's just the light levels, whereas uh, Accent AI and Luminar does contrast and color pop and stuff like that. So anyway, I feel like I got a pretty good looking photo so far. There's before and after, but I'm going to go have some more fun. Adjustable gradient was a great tool. You set the orientation. I'm going to come in here and shrink that and maybe uh, tilt that a little bit and put it like right up in there somewhere. Uh, now that I've got that set, I can adjust the top and the bottom separately. So maybe a tiny bit of contrast in the top, maybe pull up the shadows, a little bit of vibrance, and a little bit of warmth. Yeah, maybe something like that. And in the bottom, I'm gonna, uh, let's see, I am gonna increase the shadows as well, and definitely vibrance and warmth. Whoa, not too much vibrance. Uh, a little bit of warmth here. Yeah, that's looking good. I've figured out why I like color so much. I used to always do all these HDRs and they were always just so colorful, but this is fun. I like it. I mean, sorry, I'm having a trip down memory lane kind of live as I'm recording this, but um, it's just plain fun. I don't care who you are, it's fun. So I'm gonna give a little bit more color to the highlights. I kind of like that. That's a nice little pop there. Uh, so color toning, it's split toning. I use it all the time and just frankly, absolutely adore it. I think now that I've done that, I'm gonna go back to adjustable gradient, stay in bottom and lift that exposure just a little bit. I like having that visibility into that lower half of the photo. One of the great things about HDR is you can just balance the light across the photo really well. So if you want visibility across the entire photo, HDR is a great way to do that because it does help you um, achieve that quite easily, I might add. So there's the before, obviously much darker except for the sky. In the after, much more balanced light, nice pop of color. I might go back to color, actually HDR basic, and maybe give that a little bit of tint. My dog is barking in the other room. I don't know if you can hear that, hopefully not. Um, I might actually go a little bit cooler. And now that I've done that, I'm gonna go, I'm, I'm making this up as I go, my friends. I'm gonna go into the saturation of the blue because I don't wanna overdo the blue. Pull that down just a little bit. I think that looks good. Let me show you the before and after. There's before, 
there's after. And if I do the split compare sliding window thing, you can see we had a massive difference in the photo. The only other thing I might do, and this is another nice thing about um, Aurora HDR is it has layers. I can add a new adjustment layer. And I think what I'm gonna do is, because that allows me to mask things in, I'm gonna go in and add some denoise and I'm just gonna mask this layer in. I'm gonna say brush and I'm just gonna paint that into the sky. Let me show mask, that'll make it easier. Mask, show mask, there we go. That helps you uh, figure out where you're painting these things in. So I'm gonna do a sloppy job and I'm gonna do a quick job but I'm just gonna do some in the sky and some in the water. Down here in the water, I'm only gonna do the part where the sky is reflected. I don't really wanna do anything up into those shadowed areas that are reflecting the buildings. I kinda like that the way it is, but I definitely wanna smooth out the sky and water a little bit. Let me say that I'm done. Um, and I basically smoothed out the sky and just where the sky is reflected in the water, I didn't really wanna smooth it out where the buildings and the bridge are reflected. And that's my full edit, my friends. Let me show you one more time. Before, that's a single exposure. That's probably my middle exposure. And after, and if you do the before and after comparison, lots of power, lots of control, lots of fun, to be honest. That was a trip down memory lane with Aurora HDR. I hadn't been in here in a long time. I thought, you know what? The heck with it. I'm gonna do a video about Aurora HDR. Still a great product all these years later. It hasn't been updated in a couple of years in terms of new features. I have no idea what the plans are. I keep meaning to ask them about it, but I'm so caught up in Neo, I just forget about it. But even so, by today's standards, still a great product. And frankly, HDR, even though I don't do it really much anymore, it's just a lot of fun. Anyway, that was it, my friends. A little trip down memory lane. Thanks for wandering down that uh, memory lane with me. Hope you're doing well. Stay safe out there. Take care of yourselves. I'll be back soon. And until then, my friends, adios.